Welcome. Today we're going to be taking apart an Asus Tough Gaming FX504 gaming laptop. And to start, we're just going to need a small Phillips bit. This is a 2.5. So we'll go ahead and flip the laptop over. And we're going to remove all of the bottom case screws. All right, so now we're just going to separate the bottom case here from the palm rest assembly. And to do that, you're just gonna find the seam where the two parts meet, uh, which is gonna be a little bit more than halfway up. And then just get a spudger or some other uh, flat tool, and then you can work it in there. There we go. So once you've got enough of it popped up, you can just uh, just start lifting it up with your hands and take it the rest of the way off. All right, so quick look inside. Uh, nothing looks too difficult to take apart. Um, I do see the motherboard screws are a little bit smaller. Um, but it does fit that 2.5 okay, so um, until I see different, it looks like you can take apart the entire laptop with just that 2.5 Phillips. So the first thing we're going to remove is the battery. So with that type of connector, it's got tabs on either side to help you push it out of the motherboard and you can remove it. And Wi-Fi card, we're just gonna pop those antennas up and off and then free that cable so that when we go to remove the display assembly uh, it'll be ready to go. And then just one screw for that Wi-Fi card and we can pull it out of the slot. All right, looks like the RAM slots are uh, easily accessible and upgradable. So we'll just spread those retainer bars and that'll allow that memory stick to pop up and then we can remove it. So you have two RAM slots uh, to upgrade your memory. Uh, so that's pretty good. A lot of computers nowadays are integrated RAM, so it's not upgradable. Uh, this one, they left you at least two slots. We'll go ahead and flip it over and we'll next remove the uh, SATA hard disk. Alright, so... Looks like it's just the two screws. and you should be able to push the hard drive out of the SATA connector after removing those two screws. And then the, uh, to release the caddy, it looks like it's just the three screws, one here and two here, and that will release your hard drive from the caddy. All right, so we have a rather large uh, fan and heat sink here. So we'll now uh, re remove the two cooling fans and the heat sink. So it looks like we're going to need to pull up on that connector for the video cable to get it out of the way. And for the fan connector, it's just a simple push out type. So get a fingernail or a tool on either side of these little tabs and then you can push that connector right out. I'll go ahead and do the same on the other side. All right, so what we need to do now is remove the screws. So 
So it looks like the fin is partially, uh, it's wiggling free, but there's a little arm that goes underneath the heat sink. So we're gonna hold off on pulling that fan for now until we remove the heat sink. And it looks like it's gonna be the same on this side as well. So I'll go ahead and just remove those fan screws. And then once we remove the heat sink, we'll be able to pull those fans out. Interesting design that they won't let you uh, remove the fans without removing the heat sink first. All right, so it looks like just a few screws for that heat sink. Um, just keep in mind that the heat sink uh, needs to be tightened down in a cross hatch pattern. Um, there are numbers stamped on the heat sink for reinstallation and the order that you're supposed to tighten those down uh, But it doesn't matter which order you take them off Looks like it for the heat sink screws, so we're just going to kind of give it a wiggle until it's nice and loose, and then we will slowly lift it up and off of the motherboard. And as you can see, the fans are uh, just held onto the heat sink with a little strip of tape. Um, so once you peel that, then you'll be able to release those cooling fans. So it looks like we're good to start removing the ribbons that are connected to the motherboard. And then we can free the motherboard from the chassis. Uh, if you are replacing the display, it looks like pretty early on in the disassembly. Um, as long as you've freed the video cable and the antennas, you should be able to remove that display pretty fast um, without having to remove the other stuff that I just did. Um, but we're going to save that for the last part and the procedure. Just keep in mind that if you need to replace your display, um, it looks like you'll be pretty close to getting it off as soon as you remove that bottom cover and remove these uh, connectors and hinge screws. So we'll go along now and just remove all of the connectors that are still attached to the motherboard. So a lot of these cables are just the simple, you just pull them straight out. Uh, the connectors for the keyboard, keyboard backlight and touchpad um, are all the flip up type. So just take your fingernail, flip those little connectors up, and then when you've got the ribbon out, it's best idea is to flip them back down so they don't stick up and have the possibility of getting broken. So it looks like we've got all the ribbons that I can see. And now we will remove the motherboard screws. One thing that I can see already is that the keyboard is not meant to be replaceable. And you can tell by all of the little plastic melted rivets that are holding the backing plate on. So they do that for you know ease of assembly, um, but it does not allow you to easily remove the back cover and reinstall it any way securely. So if you need to replace your keyboard, um, just plan on probably having to replace the whole palm rest assembly. All right, so now to remove the motherboard, we're gonna grab it from the inside and give it a wiggle, make sure it's nice and loose. And then we're going to kind of work it free. I do feel a little bit of a resistance here. Alright, and then just keep in mind also that these ports partially stick through the palm rest, so 
you're going to need to um, kind of wiggle those out as you're lifting the motherboard. And I do see that there's one more ribbon attached underneath the motherboard, which is why it's good to just give it a gentle wiggle and that way you can feel any kind of resistance. So you can either undo the ribbon from the little power button, I think that is, or in this case, we're just gonna peel it up and use that little flip up retainer to release the ribbon. So it's just that one that they snuck underneath that you'll have to watch for when you're removing the motherboard. All right, so we're left with the palm rest assembly and it looks like it's just some kind of small LED board. So we'll go ahead and leave that. And now we're going to uh, separate the display assembly from the palm rest. So first we need to figure out the correct angle um, to remove it. Usually, if it's not a two-in-one convertible, then you're gonna have to open up the display all the way and uh, just kind of support it underneath as you're removing these hinges. Uh, you need to open the display because the hinges won't clear the palm rest unless the display assembly or the hinges are all the way open. You don't wanna have to fight with it to try to bend the hinges up and out when they're disconnected. So we'll go ahead and finish removing the other screws. And we're doing it while the assembly is being supported underneath with your free hand. All right, so now that we have those screws out, we can finish separating the display assembly. It looks like they've used a little tape here to connect the video cable and the DC jack for some reason. All right, so now that we have that free, we can uh, take another look at the palm rest. So once you have that hinge out, DC jack can just wiggle out. All right, so the speakers are just kind of held on by some rubber grommets. Um, as explained before, the keyboard is not replaceable. And the touchpad looks like it's just a couple of screws um, at the top here, and that should be able to come out. So that is it for the palm rest assembly. Not too bad. All right, so what we have here is the complete display assembly. And the first thing we want to do is to remove the little screw covers here. And to pop those out, I just used a real tiny uh, flat blade bit to kind of get in the little, uh, the little side there so that you're able to get that little screw cover removed. And then we're gonna remove the two screws holding on the bezel. All right, so with most bezels, uh, just kind of get a finger around the front um, inside edge and then start popping it up and off. Um, there is a layer of adhesive going along the bottom of the LCD screen. So if you have a small tool to get in there, it can help keep from ripping the plastic on the screen. I'm just gonna try to just gently uh, spread the two as I'm pulling that bezel off. It looks like I'm definitely gonna need um, a little bit of help here with uh, getting the fingers in there to push down on that tape as you're pulling up. We'll see if we can get a better view here. So underneath um, this little black plastic layer here is being pulled up by the adhesive on the back of the bezel. So that's what I'm trying to get my fingers underneath uh, to try to separate the two as I'm popping that bezel up. And for a better view, 
Um, we'll go ahead and flip that over to show you. So this is the layer of black plastic at the bottom of the screen, and here is the adhesive layer. So when you're pulling it up, it's gonna be trying to yank up on this plastic here, and that's why I suggest uh, using some kind of tool there to kind of work it apart without pulling on the bezel too high and ripping that plastic off. All right, so as you see with the bezel removed, we have easy access to everything in the display assembly. So we're gonna start by removing the screws for the hinges and the LCD. If you're just wanting to replace the LCD, you do not need to remove the hinges. Um, it's just the four screws for the LCD and then you can flip it over to remove the video cable. But since we're doing a full um, disassembly, we're gonna do all of them. Okay, so assuming you're just going to replace the LCD, it's just those four screws. And once you get those screws removed, you can see the video cable connector. So we'll need to pull that piece of uh, tape off of there. In this case, I'm gonna to try to do it carefully to preserve that little part number there. So once you get that top layer off, there's one more layer to go. And as you're pulling it off, just try to be real careful at the end so that the tape doesn't give real fast and you yank that connector off. So once you have the tape pulled past the connector, it just pulls straight out. And you can install the new LCD if you need it. All right, so um, we are almost through here. The only thing left to do is remove the two hinges and the webcam video cable. So once you get those screws out, hinges are easy to remove. And now we're just gonna take this webcam cable and kind of delace it from the little channels. All right, and then once you get ready to remove that webcam, um, you need to pry from the bottom and maybe right here in the top. You don't wanna start from one side because um, it can oftentimes bend the webcam to the point where it's not gonna work anymore. And they do use uh, some decent adhesive on some of these. So if you have a precision tool, uh, you can just get underneath and pop it up that way. So I just went underneath the webcam and popped it up with the spudger. And of course, a little bit of tape and then that's how you remove the video cable. And Wi-Fi antennas are just held on by adhesive, so if you need to replace those, um, they just basically unstick. So that is it. That is how you disassemble an Asus Tough Gaming FX504 series laptop. And if this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you.